Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at what type of hardware I'm running in my home lab environment. So the first thing guys, you guys need to know is that all of this is running on a tiny PC. This is a Lenovo M70Q. This is a, one of the Arello uh, Think Center tiny ones. And with this guys, uh, I have an i7 uh, 11700T, I believe. And this one has eight cores and 16 threads. So with the 16 threads, you are able to do a lot um, and you only has a TDP of 30, 35 watts. So you're not really like drawing a lot from the wall um, if you guys have a power concern. The second thing is that I have 32 gigs of RAM in mine and that allows you to run multiple LXC containers and Docker containers all at once. Now, the way I have this set up, guys, is that I have different uh, test environments where I install like things like AdGuard, RunTP, Uptime Kuma, and some stuff for YouTube. And also I have my Windows 11 uh, instance, which I installed, I do believe, last week. And as you guys can see, it's running and it's only using two gigs. And of course, you can always bump this and make this like eight gigs or 16 gigs and still have breathing room if you have 32 gigs of total memory that is available for everything else. Now, the way I have it, as you can see, most of this, most of my services are running in uh, Casa OS. So as you can see here, I have my Casa OS and my services are running in here. And all of these services, I use them um, from the Casa OS. So you're able to have one LXC. And then with that LXC container, you can use it as a, like a Docker host. And then with that Docker host, you can have multiple services running and you don't have to have an LXC container per service you want to run. You can also do that if you want to be able to back up all of your services. So as you guys can see, I have uh, guacamole and you guys know what this is, is for uh, remoting in into Windows machines. This is what I use it. So you can uh, have a home page. And uh, I don't know if I can open this for you guys, but it looks like this. So you, you log in, and then you, you're able to, to RDP into different machines that are in your network. Um, another one is Organizer. Organizer basically runs like a dashboard. Um, this one has some uh, private stuff, so I don't really show you this. And you, you guys uh, know Memo because we had a video where I kind of talked about it a little bit. Uh, Cloudflare. So this also helps you. This is for Cloudflare Tunnel. And uh, it helps you basically tunnel into your home network and expose certain services on the web without opening any ports. Homebridge, uh, I'm not super familiar with this one, but I do believe this gives you like a, a home kit bridge in your home, but I haven't tested it yet. Um, and it's something that I'm going to be testing and probably making a video on. And there is Ombi. This one is can use it to request things. This is Wellos. I did a video on Wellos. It's for managing your subscriptions and things like that. And then you guys know an Nginx proxy manager or NPM for short. Unread, this is just a link to go to my Unread Jellyfin. I have an upcoming video on that. And then I have uh, AdGuard Home for uh, blocking the ads in my network. Now, all of this are running in this uh, little LXC container here running Ubuntu. So you guys can see here that I have added a note and this basically gives me a link to click on to open it so that way I don't have to type in the IP address and blah, blah, blah. So that way everything goes through without me hustling. Everything else you guys have seen is for testing. So that's kind of the hardware side. This here machine is what I use. But let's talk about hardware a little bit. Uh, one of the things that you guys need to know is that you don't actually need a, a beefy machine with a lot of uh, RAM and CPU cores. You can even use something like an M720Q. So you can use something like that. And it's even cheaper 
than the the M70 and it has like similar performance, especially if you have the one that has the 8500T CPU. Um, you can do some research. I do believe uh, Serve the Home YouTube channel. They do have like uh, a lot of uh, interesting videos about the tiny PCs. They call it the mini micro something. So you guys can uh, look them up. Um, they, they're called, their channel is called Serve the Home. So when you're building your home lab, you don't have to go with a big machine. When I started, I had a Dell R720, I think it was 710, R710. And this thing would basically, when it starts, it would wake up the neighborhood. It would be like, basically like uh, starting the airplane engine. So it was not home friendly. So when you're, you know, trying to learn and building things you don't have to get like a big machine with a lot of like you don't need anything that's going to heat your home and uh, consume a lot of electricity you just need something that you can use to learn installing lxc containers uh, linux distributions and using it as a learning uh, platform and that's why i i, I chose uh, Proxmox, because with Proxmox, you can basically use it as a a, uh, a launching pad to learn other things. All right. So someone asked uh, about power usage or power management. Um, in my particular home lab, I do not have any way to, I don't have a UPS or anything like that. Everything is plugged into the wall. And if I lose power, then everything goes down like that. But I do have a PBS, which is a Proxmox backup server. And that basically backs up all of my VMs and LXCs. And that what happens is like every day it takes a, a snapshot. And if everything goes down, I'm still able to uh, restore from uh, the backup uh, server um, if I'm not able like to start uh, my server or if something happens to the hard drive and the hard drive I have in here is an SSD I do believe it's a crucial 500 gig it's nothing special it's just one SSD so if it craps out I probably lose everything but I do have my backup server so I'm not worried about that um Another thing to talk about is mostly to do with Proxmox configuration and what type of version I'm using. And you guys know that I'm using the VE 8.2.2. I haven't checked updates in a while, so maybe that's a thing that I should do. Um, actually, let's let's uh, let me show you how easy it is to check for updates uh, in uh, Proxmox, guys. As you guys can see, there is a lot of things to update. And uh, I'm not sure if I do it, uh, it's not that that is not going to ask me to reboot. But uh, you know what? What the heck? We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Upgrade. And hold on. There is a console open here. I'm going to zoom in for you guys. Does it let me zoom in? Yes. Here we go. So we're zoomed in all the way in. So it's 500 meg of uh, additional space that will be used. I'm going to say yes. Just clicking there, yes. So this is gonna update guys, and it's super easy to do. It does the update, and uh, normally I I do this like once a month or something like that, but I it's been a while since I did the updates for uh, uh, for this. So hopefully hopefully it's not a big deal. Uh, we'll see if I do have to reboot. So. It does have to update the kernel. Uh, yeah, so eventually I'm going to reboot, but uh, we won't have to worry about that for now. So we'll let it work in the background and continue to our video. Yeah, I mostly do uh, things that are based on Docker. And uh, and since Proxmox help you uh, install anything you want, uh, it's basically the best uh, platform to use when you're starting out. So... Yeah, this video was unplanned, guys, and it was mostly like a, in a response to a comment that I received. Um, I don't know if I'm there's something that I haven't talked about. Future JC here. So 
I thought about uh, what I just spoke about in the video and I thought, hey, why not add a few things here? So this is another place, guys, where you can find cheap desktops uh, that are on sale, that are refurbished by the manufacturer. So this is DellRefurbished.com. And on this site, sometimes you do find like good deals. Right now, things are kind of expensive, but normally you'll find like the Dell Optiplex 7080 for like 200. So this is a site that I keep an eye on. Another site that I keep an eye on is discprices.com. Over here, you can basically customize to find any uh, hard drive type that you need for any price that you need for the capacity that you want. So this is another tool that you can use to, to your benefit to find things on different uh, store. I do believe they have an affiliate link, so you'll be also helping them out. Another place is unixsurplus.com. This is where you can buy used and cheap parts, uh, like, you know, server surplus stuff or, or yeah, Unix surplus. I think it's in the name. So... <laughs> So yeah, so this is play on here. I do believe you can buy some HBAs and also some CPU, some hard drives uh, for the chip. And uh, also this is all used. So whatever you buy here, I don't know what's the guarantee, but uh, you can see here you have a 10 terabyte for $79. So, you know, um, use your judgment, guys. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd talk about this um, and also... Uh, for the CPU that I'm using, um, you have to, when you get a CPU and you, you want to install something like Jellyfin, you need to make sure that at least you, if you want to do a uh, hardware transcoding, you need to make sure that your, your CPU has an integrated GPU, especially if it's a tiny PC, because you won't have a place to stick an external graphics card. So make sure that you at least have an integrated uh, GPU. So yeah, so back to the video, guys. I just wanted to insert that comment uh, before the video is over. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video which I'm preparing and writing as we speak. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.